Good morrow, my dear strangers. I don't know how about you, but I fell in love with cloches. Yes, those fascinating glass dome displays. That's definitely something on my list to complement my home decor. So I went out to see what I could discover in our limited stores, and I was very pleasantly surprised. They just stocked up on simple cloches with plain softwood base. And as I was walking around, I also discovered a suitable candle that I grabbed right away. Sometimes you can find cloches already decorated, even if poorly. But don't worry, you can totally remake them. Another thing you might consider is a pedestal, like a simple candle holder, or even a candy holder, as I got for a few cents. You might even use a cake stand, though that might be a bit pricier. But let's jump into our makeovers. I'm starting with the small cloche. The glass is very solid, and I love the little knob at the top. The base is very well made also, but I think I can make it even better, and I think the glass pedestal will be perfect for it. I would like the base to be darker, so I'm starting by staining it with watered umbra acrylic paint. You might notice the sticker glue is very difficult to remove from wood without leaving stains. Scraping it off carefully with a sharp razor blade seemed to work best for me. Then I let it dry properly. Before getting any further, I decided to attach my pedestal. And for a while, I was playing with something to fill the glass. But in the end, I decided against it. I think this glass relief will stand out best if left empty. But back to the gluing. I'm using a one for all glue sealant. It is supposed to glue and seal just about everything. So let's give it a test. I carefully applied a small amount around the edge of the glass with the spatula. Then I carefully placed it in the middle of the bottom of the base, pressed it gently and let it dry overnight. Make sure not to get the glue where you don't want it. It's holding pretty well, but I think the color seems quite dull, not quite washed or dark enough. So I'm going to try to deepen it with umbra antiquing paste. I'm using a small stiff bristle art brush to apply the paste. I'm also using a transparent wax paste to help move the umbra paste around and to soak up the wood well. You can buff any excess off with a soft cloth. Now it's perfect, exactly the tone I had in mind. This cloche is pretty tiny, so all I could fit for my spring decor was a little bird nest with a quail eggshell and a few feathers. I also wanted to tie something to the knob, but without being overpowering. In the end, I just used an original tassel and rewrapped the golden thread over with a cream one to tune it down. And that's all for my little cloche. I think the pedestal just brought it a few levels up, literally. And now the big makeover for the big gloss. This one really needs upscaling. The wood is quite rough in places and the glass dome is very fragile, with glass flaws and without any knob at the top. So let's fix it up. I found this small metal drawer pulley in my stash that I thought was perfect as the top handle. But before gluing, I washed and degreased the glass dome and the knob with alcohol carefully. Again, I'm using my one for all glue and carefully positioning the handle as much in the center as I can and setting it aside to dry till the next day. And again, the result is quite satisfactory. As for the base, 
I decided to cover the rough edge with a molded trim. I'm using the Trimmings One Mold from IOD. Unfortunately, I got cheated by an online store and received a copy which is not as good as original. The air dry clay I have is not the best either, but it's okay. I roll it and press it carefully into the mold I selected. Then I scrape the excess off with an art spatula. I'm not particularly fond of this clay because it cracks a lot and I have to often repeat the castings. Anyway, I needed about two and a half castings to cover the base all around. I'm using a PVA glue to attach the design to the edge of the base, but the wood glue would work too. Then I fit the castings as tight as possible, though I know the clay will shrink, so it will need touching up later. By the next day, the clay shrank a lot, so I filled the gaps with the PVA glue stuffed it with clay and roughly shaped it with a small spatula. But I'm not worried, after I'm done, it will be barely visible. If you don't have any mold, you can also get interesting results by gluing a thick lace or gimp trim around the edge. And now it's time for painting. I'm using any Sloan chalk paint in original. But I stopped before painting the bottom. Looking at the base with the design, I think it needs to go up a little to show off. So I decided to glue three wooden beads to the bottom of the base. As I'm a perfectionist, I had to measure an equilateral triangle inscribed in a circle and mark the precise positions of my bead feet. Then I glued them down with my one for all glue. And it's time for second coat of original chalk paint, including the bottom of the base. And if you enjoy my videos, please like, share and subscribe. It really helps me going. After the chalk paint dried, I thought I would bring out the design details with a gel stain. I'm using an ordinary wood gel stain from the Obby Home Improvement Store in a palisander shade, but I'm sure you can find a similar one in your local store. As you can see, I'm painting in sections and wiping the stain off with a damp cloth continuously. I'm trying to get into all the deep areas. Then I applied the stain to all the other areas and wiped off any excess. I really love how this base turned out. When it's dry, I seal it with clear furniture wax, buff it up and get on with the decorating. I thought about using a little tree branch with some flowers. However, I was not happy with the ones I had. So I found some tutorials online and quickly crocheted a few. I will link some in the description box below. Then I added a little wooden bead in the center and was very happy with the result. Then I attached them to the little branch with hot glue. I don't think my spring design collage would be complete without some quail eggshells 
bird's nest, and feathers. As my cloche is quite narrow and tall, I got inspired by stacked china. And I found a couple of pretty teacups in my cupboard collection. I was considering the pink and blue ones, but then I voted for a more neutral white with gold rim. I stacked the two cups and set the nest with the eggs on top. Then I placed the branch and carefully lowered the glass dome over it. And as a traditional spring symbol, I tied a key to the top with pink seam binding ribbon. I really love how this one came out, especially the base. It gained so much with the trim and the paint. I almost forgot I had such pretty teacups. And those crochet flowers look so much better than the paper ones. The antique knob made the dome much more finished and the rusty key is a nice extra touch. I hope you like my spring cloche makeovers as much as I did. Don't forget to push those familiar buttons and I hope to see you next time.